All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to look at packaging some inside runs with outside runs, and I'm going to do it while looking at two backs on the same side. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, sideline replay system we use at Bishop Kenny High School, and I also used it at the school I was previously at. If you're, excuse me, looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, great customer service, make sure you check out GameStrat. Dome hats, headwear company we use with Play Fast Football, Bishop Kenny High School. I've been using them for about the last... Uh, 10 or so years, great company, completely customizable. Your hat, you build it the way you want. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome help you tell yours. Baker Sporting Goods, company we use for coaches' gear, our game night sideline apparel, our player spirit packs, our uniforms are distributed from them. We have school stores through them and coaches' stores and fan stores through them. Great for one stop shopping. Get all of your stuff in one place. Check out Baker Sports. Just Play, which is the software we use, playbook software we use. We do a lot of our installs in it. We do a lot of our uh, presentations, team meetings, things in there. If I speak at any clinics, that's what I use. I use it on my Patreon site because it's also, for me, the easiest and best play drawing tool on the market. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. We have a couple in our weight room here at Bishop Kenny. We set them up right on our uh, squat racks. Easy to use, work on striking, elbows in, thumbs up, eyes in a proper position, what we're trying to do with our hips. Different tension coils inside to change the leverage so as kids get stronger, you can make it tougher to let the pad in, so check out Difference USA. So I mentioned this in um, uh, one of the videos I did a few weeks ago. One of the things I'm looking at in the offseason on the offensive side of the ball is I'm really interested on what two backs on the same side do not only for an offense, but from a defensive standpoint, I'm interested in looking at how would we defend this, right? So today I'm going to look at it from the two backs on the same side at the same depth as the quarterback, all right? The way that I've seen it traditionally the most as a defensive person trying to defend it and the way I've used it is I've used it where we've been stacked, all right, before with kind of a sniffer and uh, a tailback, all right? I've done it to the strength. I've done it away. But today I'm going to look at it with both backs on the same side at the same depth as the quarterback and, and I think the reason for that is I think now you're changing who the ball carriers could be. They both could be ball carriers. But the interesting thing to me, and I'm not going to get into it in the passing game today, but one of the interesting things to me is this now presents for the defense three possible route distribution possibilities to the weak side, right? So normally on defense, what do we think about? We try to get plus one in the passing game. So normally in a 20 personnel, 11 personnel world, we're trying to get four for three, three for two. We're trying to get five for four, two for one. Well, now what this kind of does, when I look at it from the defensive side, is now there's a possibility that three players can get out to the weak side. All right, so if we want to play our traditional split field coverages on defense and we're going to spin somebody down on the weak side, normally that means we have two underneath defenders and one high defender. If they can put three routes underneath, all right, and almost flood that side, or if you put the backs to the other side, right, now you could possibly get four strong real quickly. So to me, it's, it's kind of unique and, and interesting to look at because I think it changes the drops and some of the rotations for the defense with what zones they have to get to to get plus one, right? So now somehow we've got to figure out a way to get four on three over there and possibly three underneath defenders to that side. So would we have to push both our inside linebackers that way, leaving – the nickel kind of in a tough spot, all right, but that's a conversation for another day. But that's why I think two backs to the same side is so beneficial, right? So what we're going to look at today is pairing inside and outside runs, all right? So with this 20 personnel set, with both backs to the weak side, what I would do is I would pair my RPO game to the single, okay? So I would pair my, my lock isolation game. So I would pair... All right, that lock isolation scheme, all right, with one of my RPO routes to the single, all right, and then to the front side, we could be access, and that access could be hitch routes, okay? If you are a, more of a stand-up or a bubble team, then that access could potentially be bubble screen, all right? And when I say access, what I mean is giving my quarterback a chance if he has a soft look or he has an overhang tight to the box that he doesn't like that we can't block, he can get the ball out of his hand pre-snap if we are playing in the tempo world and we're trying to snap the ball as quickly as we can. We're trying to pair some runs and passes together and give our quarterback a chance to get rid of the football if he doesn't like the look, right? So now we're going to run our standard inside isolation play to the weak side. 
Okay, so whether you're a zone team or we used to be a kind of a uh, zero team, a kind of combination zone veer, whatever you're doing, you're locking the backside, zoning the front side, inserting on a backer, six on six, access seven, RPO eight to the single. Usually the glance route was the big one we tied to it, but we've run speed out, all right? At times we've run some different routes over there, but the bottom line is six on six, run game, seven and eight, we've got to handle with access and RPO, right? So that is part of our base package. We can do that from this look with two backs on the same side. Not an issue at all, okay? What I would do is I would pair that with probably wide zone to the field. And now I have inside run to the single side, outside perimeter runs to the strong side. So now I would pair that with our wide zone stuff to the field. All right, and now what I would do is I would take the front back and he would be the search three player. All right, and when I say search three, what I mean is he's going to run as if he's got the football. He's going to read the block on the five technique. All right, after the third step, our tackle, if he can't reach the five technique, he's going to knock the five technique out and run him to the sideline. All right, so we're trying to reach the five technique if we can. Now, to the open B-gap side, a lot of these teams may let their five technique play back underneath. So we may be able to get to the perimeter if we can reach them. If it's a normal team that just plays read, all right, reads off of a, a tackle that they don't want to get reached and they're not two-gapping it, then that five technique's probably going to stretch and run a little bit. So if he stretches and run and we try to go stretch crotch and get our helmet to his outside shoulder pad, on our third step, the tackle, if I can't do that, I'm going to knock him out. If I knock him out, then this first back is going to have to be able to insert and block the, the most dangerous defender he can find. All right, so our count system, or however you want to look at it, our center would be ID and everything to the front side. So we would try and get our front side defenders up to the will. That's the tough block. Back side with a three technique, trying to cut the three off and get up to the mic on full flow. That's the tough block, right? That's what makes to me wide zone so tough in high school is how you can get to the next level. Now, there's ways that you can change that, and you could possibly insert on somebody. You could turn your lineman back to the mic if you feel like that's a better deal. All right, so in this world here, because we can block the Sam as long as he's not a pressure player, what we could possibly do is we could change this to where maybe we lock the backside again. So maybe we lock the backside. We let the front side combination work. And again, this would be how you teach it because where you're working to and who you're working with. So if I'm going to work the center and the, and the front side guard back to the mic, well, then the five technique or the tackle on the five technique may be on his own. All right, or I can still work it the same way, knowing that uh, on full flow they're going to run. I can work it the same way, try and reach the nose, work the guard with the, with the tackle on the five. But now when we declare, we're going to turn back for the mic, and the search player is going to be the one that's going to handle the will. If the five technique is reached, I'm going to take it to the perimeter. I'm going to be the ball carrier. That second back is going to be the ball carrier. And now we've got our wide zone or our outside runs all right, to the perimeter. So again, that first back is what I call search three, or if even if you just want to call him a search player, you're teaching him to run as if you have the ball. So if you were running a stretch play here, where would you go? Is the five technique reached and you go out there? Keep going. If the five technique is knocked out and we're running up to the sideline, insert yourself inside. Now when you insert it inside, the thing is, if we have declared the mic as the guy that the line's going to go to because we feel like that's an easier block for us to make, and we don't know if we can get our front side guys out to the will if he's running. All right, well now, if we're going to go back, now we've got to be able to handle the will. None of our alignment are tied to the will, so now our insert player or our search defender has got to be the guy that blocks the will. Hopefully we can block the corner, block that. And then I would go access. All right, you can go hitch, speed out, fade, whatever you want on the backside. But because we're in a tempo world, if I had the outside run on, I would want my access throws to the backside of that outside run so that if the quarterback doesn't like it or if they give us an easy throw, especially into the boundary, we want to be able to take it, right? So that's a real easy way to pair things that you already do, all right? So for me, when I'm looking at new things or different things that I might like, I want to see, can I pair them with things that I already do? I don't want to put in new schemes, all right? I don't want to be experimenting too much with things that we don't do. So what I want to look at is, can we... Look at some theories that we like that may give the defense some issues, 
All right, and when we do that, can we pair it with things that we already do? All right, that's the easiest way for me in teaching and dealing with, with high school kids. That's the easiest way for me is let's, if we're going to wrinkle some things formationally, let's look at pairing them with things we always do. So if we did it to the two receiver side, it'd be the same thing. We'd pair our lock run. All right, so we pair our lock inside theory with an RPO theory, right? So now we've got to figure out what do we want to do if we're RPOing RPO off the nickel or the sand net, okay? Do we want to run, you know, there's several versions of different things you can run out here, all right? Do you like trying to take a shot? Do you want to go glance to two, fin to one, all right? And now, again, to me, if you're RPOing RPO off the nickel, I'm not a huge fan of glance to two off the nickel. If I was RPOing off the nickel, I would try and find ways to get the ball into the space that he voided out, right? So it could be stick by two, fade by one. He's in the box now. We can work our way out and throw that ball. I've seen it to where it's mandatory outside release by one, speed out by two, okay? But again, it could be whatever you want it to be. If you wanted it to be glance, it could certainly be glance with fin. So it could certainly be glance by two, fin by one. Access would be back here. All right, and usually for us, we keep it simple, hitch fade, right? We try to keep it as simple as we possibly can, hitch fade, tie it together that way. And then, again, pair it with our wide zone run. And the wide zone run to the weak side would be, depending on the rotation of the defense, do we like, are they not supporting the weak side edge? If we put four strong, are they rotating? Maybe they're using this guy. As a poach player, because we have four strong, maybe he's got to lean to this side. So now we would pair that back with our wide zone. So this would be stretch crotch there, work that up there, try and reach that, try and cut off the mic, cut off the three. You are the search player based on the read of the five technique. If the five technique is out, I insert. If the five technique is hooked, I'm there. There's your wide zone player. Access throws to me would be on that side, and they could be hitches, they could be fades if you're getting man-to-man -man or press, all right? It could be stalk bubble, could be whatever you want, right? If, you're, if you think you're playing some zero or some man teams, you may even give your quarterback the option to go slot fade and throw it quick game, because all you're trying to do is give your quarterback a chance to throw versus man coverage look, press coverage looks, loaded box looks, all right? If we don't like the inside run RPO, or we don't like the outside run weak, <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me, we are working in a tempo world. We're not going. It's not going to be. Now we can run these as a check with me deal, so we can pair the two together and say, hey, based on the front, the box coverage structure, we're either going inside lock RPO or we're going wide zone away from it, right? So we're going inside lock RPO to the side the backs are on or we're going wide zone away from it, okay? You could pair any of those runs together. It doesn't have to be those two runs. I'm just giving you an idea of things we would do in a world that, that we kind of already live in. We don't run a ton of wide zone. We've tried it before. We've run it before. If I was going to go to this type of system with backs on the same side, those are the runs I would pair together. I don't like buck sweep from there. Um, as, as far as we're talking about with the backs on this side, trying to get outside runs back to the single, right? So there's only so many things with the backs on this side we can do. All right, maybe we can get GT over there or some other things over there, maybe some bash theories where we've got GT this way, but we've got bash deals with a arc player and a read, and now we would read the backside. All right, but again, I think where this gets interesting, it's real easy for me to pair two runs together that we already do. Our lock RPOs that we already run to the single side and the two receiver side, and then our version of, of wide zone or however we want to block that as a perimeter run. We've done those things before. Those aren't really new for us. So those are real easy to pair together. One, a video that I'll probably be doing in the future is now, where are we going to go in the passing game with backs on the same side? Because now, I think as a defensive player, here's the issue you're, pre you're presenting to me now. You are automatically giving me the potential of four strong. So with the potential of four strong, I've got to figure out how I'm going to handle four strong. Right, so I think that'll be a video that we do kind of down the road is what would the passing game look like if we had backs to the same side, both backs to the single, what kind of spacing concepts or what kind of routes can we run to get three on two to the weak side, depending on what their rotations are, and what four strong theories can we carry in the passing game. The run game to me is kind of simple. It's still two backs. It's 20 personnel slash 
11 personnel in theory, we could zone bluff, we could do all the things we already do, we can insert, throw our RPOs that we already throw. That, that part is easy to me, all right, but the intriguing part is the passing game, four strong, three weak, because defensively I think that's a little bit of an issue. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. It may be things that you're already doing. Maybe you do them in, in a little bit different light. Like I said, we've done, in the past, we've done two backs in more of the 11 world. We've done it where they've both been stacked here. All right, we've done it where they've both been stacked away from, all right, the two receivers. So we've done that before. Both of them at the same level in almost that sidecar position to the quarterback where they both can be ball carriers is the one that's interesting to me. So I'm going to be looking at it more in the offseason. So hope this video helps you. If you guys have done it before and you want to leave a comment about things you do, I would absolutely love it. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. Make sure you ring that bell, turn those notifications on. You know every time we put a video out or we're going to do YouTube Live, I'm going to be on YouTube Live tonight at about 8 o'clock talking a little bit about the Super Bowl and um, what we can possibly learn uh, from NFL teams and then talking a little bit about the Nike Coach of the Year Clinic that I'm going to be at this week. Not speaking at it. Um, thought I was going to get an opportunity to speak at it, but I think they brought in some bigger, uh, some of their bigger college names. So not speaking at it this week, just going as a uh, attendee. So hopefully I can learn some ball. If any of you are going to be at that clinic and you want to meet up, make sure you hit me up. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whether you like the video, the content, or you don't like it. Leave a comment. If I see the comment, I will try and respond. Uh, as long as I can see it on my end, I love interacting with all of the community uh, that makes up Play Fast Football. So thank you for what you do for me. Hope your offseason is going well. Uh, we are already in almost the middle of February, so we're closer to spring ball. We're closer to summertime, closer to fall season, so everything kind of moves its way really fast. I hope everybody's healthy, doing well out there. Hope your offseason is going well. I appreciate everything you do for me and Play Fast Football. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you next time.